So, if you're unaware, Takeshi Obata, the artist who drew the original manga of Death Note, teamed up once again with its story maker, Tsugumi Oba, to create a one-shot sequel to the all-time acclaimed title of Death Note. Despite the title of this video, I, for the most part, really enjoyed it. However, there's a few inconsistencies that really made me dislike some aspect of it. I'll provide a link below where you can read the whole thing if you don't want me to spoil it for you. It's about 88 page. It should take you about an hour to go through the whole thing if you're a slow reader. That being said, if you don't care for spoilers, I'll be going through the synopsis regardless so we all start on the same page. The, the first one, obviously. So the story of this one shot starts off a few years later after the light era. And if you don't know about Death Note, then I, I can't help you with that. After Light's death, his Death Note returned to Ryuk, who now seeks to give it to another equally smart person. Finally finds that person in Minoru Tanaka, a middle schooler who plays first in intelligence test over the last three years. Minoru meets Ryuk via the book, and he learns about the rule of the Death Note, and when asked if he wants to use it, Minoru explains that philosophy of Kira and how it is now viewed as skewed self-righteous justice and is heavily frowned upon by any ethic standards nowadays. Despite that, Ryuk insists and Minoru comes up with a plan to make use of the book if Ryuk is willing to come back in two years. The gap happens and we are back to square one. Minoru's plan is not to use the Death Note, but to actually sell it to the highest bidder by getting the exposure on TV. Of course, anyone who has been in contact with the book in the past years still managed to see Ryuk, and that puts Nier, the new L, on the case along with Matsuda and Aizawa, former detective and pretty important characters from the first franchise. As the bid continues to grow, Minoru reveals more part to his scheme with every new slidey showcase on TV, and eventually it becomes a governmental feud where each nations try to outbid each other, with China and America at the top. Eventually, the bid cap out at 10 trillion dollars, and to prevent getting caught while receiving the money, Minoru instructs the payment to be made via every bank account under the Japanese Yotsuba Bank for anyone having a savings account on the day prior to the payment being made, still leaving 24 hours for people to create new accounts and therefore widening the potential suspect list. So the transaction happens, money is paid, Minoru loses ownership of the Death Note along with any memories of ever owning it and is now belonging to Donald Trump in America, who won the bid. Everyone still with me? Everything from that point is simply the perfect crime, impossible to get tracked, impossible for them to retrace the book back to Minoru, and even if they did, he'd have no recollection of it. Killing people with a book is a crime, but selling the book isn't. He just got away with it. Nice! And that's where it ends, right? No, not quite. Upon the transaction being completed, Minoru asks Ryu to never see him again and never to come close to him again. Ryu gets summoned by the big Shinigami boss, who for some reason disapprove of the Death Note being sold around, and it forces Ryuk to add an addendum to the rules, which now states that it is illegal to sell the Death Note. If you do, the person who bought the Death Note will die upon receiving it, and the person who sold it will die upon getting the cash. So when the money ban get lifted a month later, Minoru goes to cash in his money, which he think got granted to him by a mysterious donor, since again, he has no recollection of doing it himself, and therefore gets killed for receiving the money. And this is where for me it becomes bullshit. Two reasons, mostly. That rule got added after the transaction was completed. While neither party had received their respective part, the deal was done the moment the card went on air. If you want to add a new rule because it circumvents the way you plan the game, fine, but you cannot enforce it retroactively. The player found a loophole in the system and exploited it to his benefits. Adding it retroactively make you look like a really sore loser and that just that's just petty. Imagine playing a game where you find a glitch that level up your character really fast. You go through the grind of still doing it, sure it advantages you, but eventually they realize the issue and fix it. They wouldn't reset your character to his original level, 
or if they did, it would be as per the title of the video, freaking bullshit. That's my point number one. My point number two is all the economic aspect that just got shafted to nonsense. Maybe you never had any economic study, and I can't blame you if you didn't, but money is a little bit like alchemy. While you can print new dollars, that's not really the money yet. Money is a figurative system which we allocate worth via those slits of paper. We decide what one dollar is worth, and that is because of several intrinsic factors that is too advanced for the sake of this video to dive in, but the TLDR version of it is the reason why one Canadian dollar is not worth the same as one American dollar or one yen. Money worth changed daily, depending on, again, a lot of factors. So when Trump decides to buy the Death Note for 10 trillion dollars, where does that come from? I mean, obviously it goes into depth, but what does that mean? First of all, uh, that's a freaking huge geopolitical problem he would need to clear with his advisors, but we all know he sometimes go beyond that, because he literally jacked America's debt from 23.2 trillion to 33.2 trillion. I'm not an economics major by any mean, but I cannot presume this would bode well for anyone ever. Equally so, what do you think would happen when one quadrillion yen suddenly comes in within the nation? Do you think everyone will be able to afford all their needs and everything they ever wanted? No, because of, again, inflation and price adjustment. If anyone is a million dollar richer, then a bag of chip which used to be worth three bucks is now worth three thousand bucks. Because think about it, if everyone is suddenly rich, then no one will want to work anymore. And if there's no one working for the primordial services, then the country will just go into chaos. If no one mans the convenience store, clean up the sewers, or whichever paramount everyday job because everyone took off, can you imagine the chaos that would lead the country into? I mean, sure, you can ask for the, the people who didn't get rich to pick up the slack, but that would just create more anarchy. All that aside, I think it's still a good one-shot that did justice to the franchise because the, the sole point is just to create the perfect crime. But to play the devil's advocate, I think it's stupid that Ryuk felt the need to kill Minoru. I get it, the house always win. But compared to Light, who actually had it coming and also deserved it, and also, also, how it was foreshadowed at the beginning and everything, killing Minoru felt like a cop-out. The guy outwitted the system, and he got punished despite that. Also, you gotta love that every cutaway to Nier is just him being like, well, GG, he beat us, and him explaining why his plan is so good. But that's just my opinion on the whole matter. Did you read the Death Note one-shot? Did you like it? Does it live up to the main series? Is it as good as the original? Leave your opinion in the comment section down below. I'm dying to find out. I, I had to put a crappy pun in my outro. It's in my contract. I'm sorry, I just have to do it. Thanks for listening to my ramble for a few minutes about economics, a topic I have no grasp whatsoever on, but that I think I understand. Which, you know, is all YouTube is about, truly, right? I realize it's a little bit on the weirder side kind of videos that I'm doing, but I really had an opinion about it and I wanted to share it with everyone else. If you like this video, give me my leaky leaky boom boom. Also, uh, yes, I am really sick right now, so my voice is absolute ass. I apologize you had to listen to it for the past 10 minutes. Now I'll see you guys next time. I've been on the wrong side, I've been ashamed So many memories, you know I'd like to change yeah.